Howdy folks, Banjo Dan here with another installment of the Eclectic Banjo. Today I'll be stringing up Nile Gut onto my Neckville Phantom Banjo. I've been playing more with the claw hammer style and heard that the Nile Gut offers a warmer tone and a bit softer tactile feel than steel strings. Be sure to stick around towards the end where I compare the sounds of the two types using a claw hammer excerpt from Big Rock Candy Mountain. I chose to buy a pack of Pisgah Banjo Nalgut strings. The company is just north of me in the lower Appalachians. They have a color coding system for their different gauges. They also list the gauges on their packs, something that the well-known Aquila brand strings don't always do. The color coding chart is on the back. The fourth string is listed as white, but it is in fact entirely a reddish brown in color. Before we dive into the process of tying the strings to the tailpiece and the tuner shafts, let's establish some knot vernacular. Except for the fourth string, which is all reddish brown in color, the strings have colored ends and white ends. The white ends will be tied into square knots to loop over the tailpiece hooks. And the colored ends will be snaked up to the tuning shafts at the peg head. The two main terms I'll be using to describe the knot tying process will be the standing end and the working end. The standing end will be the main length of the string coming from the tailpiece, and the working end will be the end of each string. When tying Nile gut strings onto the banjo, you first start with a square knot for the tailpiece end. It's like a double knot for your shoelaces if you skipped the bunny ears. Try to keep the length of the standing end as short as possible and the loop as small as possible. Loop the standing end around the shaft once from the outside inward, going under the working end. Then twist the working end around the standing end once to create a cinch before tightening the tuners. Here's another look at the process. Remember to go from the outside to the inside with the standing end loop. I cinched the knot too soon with the first string, creating a big loop, but it still worked. The second string, I had too much length on the working end of the knot, which reduced the amount of string for the tuning shaft. My method did improve a little bit with the third and fourth and fifth strings, evaluated by the amount of slack left over after tightening the tuners. I cut the ends with wire cutters, leaving about an inch or so left over just in case the knots give a little over time. Then I melt the ends. This creates a bulb which will reduce the likelihood that the knot would unravel completely if loosened. Careful where the fire goes because it will melt the other parts of the string. The sound on the steel strings sounded brighter and had more staccato due to the metallic composition of the strings, whereas the nile gut strings sounded warmer and there was less abrasive sound when interacting with the strings. If I was playing without picks or thimbles, I'd go with the nile gut, but if I was wearing picks or thimbles, I might go either way. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time at the Eclectic Banjo.